Okay, so good evening, everyone. Um, my name is uh, Daniela Florio, and uh, tonight I'm here with Sandra Ferreira. Um, I, I cannot tell you how um, excited I am to have you on, Sandra, tonight. Um, I mean, we've known each other for a little while, and uh, just let me tell you, I clicked the button and I went live, and I went like, <laughs> <laughs> so I just, <laughs> I wasn't expecting to go on live, just bang on, but here you are, sometimes that's what happens with technology, but let me come back to you. Um, so, so, Sandra. You are a parapsychologist, spiritual minister, medium, a spiritual healer, a lecturer, and a public speaker for TEDx, Harvard. You've done it at, uh, you've, you've been a public speaker at Harvard University, various TVs, and radio. I have known you for a little while, and I knew some but I didn't know all of it. And that is mind blowing. So the first question I want to ask you um, is this. You, um, you describe yourself as a scientist, but then you are a full blown spiritualist. You are a medium. How the two got together? Because sometimes you got one and not the other. Although we have examples in history when that is not quite the case, but how these two merged so well in your life? First of all, thank you so much, Daniela, for inviting me. It's a pleasure to be here with you. I also admire a lot your work, your enlightened spirit and a wonderful professional and spiritualist and medium and all the above. Uh, so it's a wonderful, it's a wonderful question, uh, and it's very educated for the public because nowadays, especially with spiritualism, science and religion are not conflicting at all, right? That's the beauty of spiritualism. It started in a scientific note, right, with... Uh, a lot of experiments being done because of the manifestation of spirits uh, back in the 1800s. So obviously we are talking about modern spiritualism, but uh, all, this whole phenomenon of mediumship and, and, and everything is really ancient. We, we see a lot of, of those uh, events, phenomenons in the Bible and even the Old Testament uh, you know, the prophets, they, they were mediums, they communicated with the angels, they communicated with spirits, they received message from their guides, so it's the same process. Um, so in terms of combining uh, uh, the spiritual part, uh, the spiritualism or a spirituality with science, for me is like, is absolutely no conflict so I, I grew up in a Baptist church in a very Christian traditional church uh, uh, family. And so the spirituality was always part of my life. And uh, like some, some, of, some of my siblings, most of my siblings at some point, they kind of left the church and stuff, but I have always been extremely connected with the spiritual part. I left the Baptist church after a while because I started to, Question some of the doctrines, but I never, never uh, departed myself from God and for, from the search of, uh, from my soul about the meaning of life and the, the connection that we have as a human being with the spiritual world. And I have always been an inquisitive mind. Uh, I always love to study, and it's like there is like some funny stories about me. Like when I was uh, four years old, I, I used to get some uh, notebooks, like random notebooks in my house and, and run away to my dad's office, which was like a couple of houses uh, down the, the, the street saying that I was going to school. <laughs> so that, that's, you know, I, I grew up with this thirst for knowledge and this passion for studying. I have five college degrees. So I, if, I, if I could, I'd be 
uh, studying to this day. So uh, officially, like I, I keep studying by myself, but I'm not enrolled in a uh, university or, or anything like that anymore. But uh, so th that is me, right? So that's uh, who I am. I love both things. I, 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 I think um, a part of the, uh, the development of human soul it needs to combine those two sides. Whatever you you as a human or as an individual decide to develop or to embrace those aspects of yourself, but it's part of this spiritual development to develop our intellectual aspect as well. So uh, spirituality without thinking, without critical thinking is just fanatism right it doesn't doesn't help it's like we become easily manipulated uh it, it just becomes like easily like something that's not healthy for people or groups so and that's my belief and how and that's how that developed that's why uh, spiritualism makes perfect sense for me because it doesn't deprive me from critical thinking from uh, embracing my scientific self and uh, how is music uh, playing a role um, with the spiritualism then? Let's take it from another angle. Uh-huh. <laughs> well, that, that's another really interesting <laughs> question. Um, there was a movie uh, that was, uh, uh, was based, uh, was done based on a book uh, uh, written by uh, Chico Xavier, uh, so the original title was No Solar, and the the translation uh, of the book and the movie was, is like Astro City. So the the movie and the book is available on Amazon and some other online platforms. Mm -hmm. Is a wonderful kind of very illustrative book about uh, is was psychographic, so it was like in, uh, direct it's direct re uh, writing. Uh, from the spirit of Andrea Luis, who was um, a doctor, a physician uh, who lived in the 1950s. And the book is, uh, is uh, him telling his experience yeah. in this place, which he called our home. Right. And it was pretty much a place where uh, his soul and some other souls were, were receiving treatment for uh, his his development so because he he was a very spiritual person to, to in in his essence but when he was here uh he developed himself intellectually and stuff but he departed himself from god so that's why he was he was in this colony that that was called our home helping being helped and uh to connect with himself uh, and in, in, in this movie, there's parts of it that uh, the people are gathering around the lake and there, is mu there are musicians playing. Mm. And, and they, their part, their mission in their recovery is through their music. So it's fascinating how, how validating it is, this experience coming from the spiritual world to the experiences we have here, how... Uh, how music is healing and how music is, is also a divine language, right? That unites us all, that uh, break barriers, that, that, you know, dissolves conflicts and all that. So my passion for music also started in childhood and I could not depart myself from that, uh, so I also have a, a college degrees in, in piano performance and and and, and music and uh, excuse me, uh, opera singing. So I uh, so I I have this passion for both because they are they are complementary, right? So both for spiritualism for for our spiritual development and also to psychology is is extremely healing. Um, and is is a wonderful uh, language with infinite possibilities. So I use music both for my spiritual practices, for myself, for for people that look for me, uh, for meditation, for my my mediumship students, and also for my practice um, in, in in psychology. So 
Yeah. It, it's just part of the this big <laughs> package. Big, big package, absolutely. And this is where I wanted to get to, to your work in mental health. And uh, as a public speaker, are the two connected or somehow are you, um, because I know that you do inspirational speaking, right? Um, so how do you find you um, your service um, helping others while you do, when you do the public speaking, for instance? Is this like, do you feel inspired through spirit as well? And if that is the case, what is your purpose through spirit? if you have figured it out or you're just part of a, an overall uh, picture for God, you know? Mm -hmm. you yes, know? absolutely. They are always interconnected for, to some extent, although I don't officially mix uh, when I'm, when in my practice as a psychologist, I don't, I don't do mediumship readings or no, I don't do not, it. No. Spiritual because I don't want to, first of all, it's an ethical uh, and also is I don't want to impose any anything on my patients. Uh, I, I If they are atheists, they, if they are, have other religions, uh, my role is to help them as a professional. But uh, as we know, as intuitives and uh, mediums, we are always receiving messages from our guides and spirits and and even uh, our loved ones or their loved ones, and even without mentioning, uh, is <clears throat> usually very, um, very in, uh, intricate. So those experiences sometimes, um, <clears throat> you know, a patient comes and they're 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 um, what they are describing and uh, about their problems is one thing, and what I feel about them, about their history, about you know, everything, the soul journey that we can do, uh, you know, is a completely different story. And little by little with a lot of respect and, and uh, compassion, we can get to the core of it uh, without insulting anyone, of course, uh, but, <clears throat> you know, helping them with, with what they really need because this people sometimes, and we, even us, right? Like we, we can lie to ourselves, yeah. saying that, oh I don't have this problem or my problem is something else and and we we miss the opportunity to really heal ourselves right to really that go to so the true. that's so true um do you find in your experience that people um under truly understand the importance of self-healing yeah not everyone not everyone does I think most people don't yeah uh, and it's a wonderful thing that you're bringing up because we we have Im immense possibilities, right? Mm -hmm. To either destroy ourselves or to heal ourselves. Mm -hmm. And that's what I try to encourage people to do. Of course, of course. You see, the, the purpose of my school for conscious evolution is um, exactly around this, to raise the awareness, you know, of uh, how important self-healing is um, as well as being myself a medium, I understand that uh, the way we are he heading, um, you know, uh, it's um, the, the, the becoming conscious that self-healing is as important as healing others, if not even more important, because uh, what happens is that uh, at this present moment in time, um, like as a psychologist, for instance, you are one part of the equation because you are helping people to understand themselves. Um, pretty surely I understand that you will be trying to um, help them to help themselves, if you see what I mean. Yeah, yeah. Um, but at the same time, from the spiritual point of view, I think that sometimes depression um, is a, a as I understand it, um, is that true actually? I, I'm just gonna uh, turn this around and ask you the question. Is depression a form of lack of connection to our soul? Or there is more to it? I mean, I'm talking about not knowing anything about psychology. 
yeah so there there's a lot of things in depression and there's a lot of types of depression different times and um uh, there's like depression that's induced by other diseases by brain tumors or uh, all the kinds of can cancer or even like uh, uh, substance abuse, um, uh, lack of nutrition, right? Um, lack of sleep uh, and hormones uh, in women. So, so many things that influence depression, that triggers depression. Mm -hmm. But uh, definitely in everything, I, I would not say that is definitely a, a, only a lack of connection with self. But uh, it can lead to that or can be a consequence of that in some cases. Yes, some cases. I understand, though, what you're saying, that there is a physical aspect to that, like hormones or, or you know, this terrible diseases and all of that. And thank you for that, because obviously sometimes uh, when people like me live a lot in the spiritual side of things as well, we kind of tend to not ground the fact that we are still 3D bodies and we need to function around that too, right? Yes, absolutely. Uh, so I get that. So how did you become a licentiate spiritualist minister? <laughs> you, you after are, all of this, after all of these beautiful things. You have wonderful questions, even without knowing me, you're getting to <laughs> the core points of my life. That's interesting. So to tell you the truth, uh, I didn't really plan to be a spiritualist minister. I, I was uh, always curious about mediumship or spiritualism and all that. But when I decided to study, my intention was to become, a, 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 how is it called? <laughs> I forgot the name now, a licensed medium, right? Yes, yeah, yeah, sure. uh, uh, I'm sorry? Uh, no, no, I was saying yes, you, it was yes. the licensed, yeah, spiritual. Yes. As, as, as certified medium, I, certified, that's, yeah. that was my goal. So I, so in Mars Pratt Institute, which is where I studied, yeah. um, uh, there was like two options. Uh, one to be like one course for to be a healer and the other one to be a certified medium. Right. So, I, and, and healer. So uh, then I have chosen the other, the, the one that was more complete. At the end of the course, so I, when I did was several years, so I did all the courses, I did the exams and stuff. At the end of the course, I received the certificate and uh, the communication first and then certificate that I was also a spiritualist, uh, a, set, a last ancient minister, which was included in a package and I didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> so obviously so, spirit had a plan for you and you were, weren't even aware of that <laughs> i know i know it was definitely a, a plan <laughs> from my mom because i have not ne never chosen that but uh here i am i'm glad to be a, a minister and uh, helping people and stuff so yeah. so i understand that on the back of this you actually ha uh, have you been running workshops i understand you run workshops um mediumship do you do circles what is it that you practice yes Yes, I have uh, I have some groups of uh, mediumship literature uh, and and also mediumship circles. I have some international students that join us online via Zoom. Uh, okay. That's the beauty of inter international meetings. Oh, right? Don't we love this? Look, look you I and know. I from the I other know. side of the world. <laughs> we, we would never have met, probably, right? Yeah, you are. Yeah. Right. I am in California. That's so, so nice and beautiful. So, isn't it? It's, that's gorgeous. You know, I know. spirit has come up with, you know, uh, and technology, how it developed suddenly within a couple of years, isn't it? But everything, yes. everything ended up here. Absolutely. And, oh, I'm feeling so grateful. I mean, you know, on the back of a terrible thing, but something really beautiful is also born out of this which is expanding the human connection and collaboration uh, between people of different categories in our case spiritualism 
you know, mm -hmm. and this is the most amazing thing, right? So mm -hmm. when you say, you mentioned you run uh, um, like uh, literature, mediumship uh, on literature. What, what is that about? What does it mean? Yeah. So there's wonderful books uh, out there uh, all the way from the 1800s uh, mm -hmm. that are available to everyone and they are really enriching to the practice of mediumship. Uh, I see, I started this group because, um, first of all, I I'm from Brazil, right? And in, in Brazilian spiritualism, uh, there is, is, a, is a very, uh, is a big emphasis on studying, on reading the books and understanding the basics of sp spiritism, what they say, like in the Kardecism, right? So right. People, people study and the, the books and when they are really uh, knowledgeable about everything that was taught uh, and then they start practicing spiritual healing and, and mediumship and, and the development is together, is combined with the practice and the study. So I do, I do believe in that. I think that uh, it's not in a sense that those books are being followed blindly, like Christians follow the Bible without thinking, without reflecting. No, but uh, they contain very enriching knowledge from spirits. There's a lot of books have that has been direct reading uh, directly from spirits. Uh, with information from them, from their perspective, and and that is is really helpful for us to understand. So, uh, and those are the books I I used. I read with my students uh, during the sessions, and then then we discuss at the end. And uh, there's there's books from uh, from so many authors, but uh, the ones that are basic. I really like the books from Alan Kardec, even though I am uh, graduated and have a degree here in America, uh, but I really like the books from Alan Kardec because they are, uh, they, they are the beginning of the studies of mediumship. They have a lot of science and they, they have a lot of um, you know, experiments and, and, and the conclusions that were drawn from uh, from those experiences and 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 it's really enlightened and it talks about and for for example the book of spirits by Alan Kardec which is his first group his first book uh, read uh, published uh, is like composed by over a thousand questions and answers from the scientists to spirits to the spirits uh, about everything in life about wow. Life and that about uh, sex, about family relationships, about uh, you know uh, food, uh, about everything you can imagine. I have here Phil Show uh, that I welcome dearly. Um, he is a wonderful medium he, himself. He practiced trance as well, trans, uh, you know, mediumship and. Uh, He's asking, Sandra, are you referring to spirit, spiritist philosophy? And he also adds that uh, he has Kardec's The Book of Mediums. Mm -hmm. Yes, wonderful. Yes, exactly. I, uh, as I mentioned that, yes, the spiritist. Uh, there is a couple of differences between spiritualism and spiritist spiritism but there's a lot of congruences. So the, bas the basics are the same. Right. And can you explain a little bit more, since this is a school of evolution, we want to know a bit more about this. Is there any way you could explain roughly the, the, the differences between the two? Sure. So the spiritist, the spiritism started in France in the 1800s uh, with, with this, those studies from Alan Kardec and his group. Uh -huh. And is very uh, well spread in South America and in Europe. And the basic difference between spiritism and spiritualism is that spiritism is 100% based on Jesus and in Jesus' uh, uh, teachings. Okay, so this is yeah. spiritism. It's spiritism. 
So, and, and what they say is that is, is like somehow evolution of Christianism, because uh, when the Bible was written at that time, Jesus time, or even in, in, in uh, Old Testament time before Christ, uh, humanity was different than we are now. We, uh, we have acquired a better ability to understand more abstract things. And that is reflected on science, that's reflected on our, our art, and that's reflected on everything. Mm -hmm. uh, so, and, uh, but a lot of things, all the basics of spiritism and spiritualism are in the Bible. They are not wow. confused. Yes. It is and blowing my mind. Uh, thank you. Hi, Neil. Thank you for joining us. And uh, um, Claire as well. That's like people start joining us little by little. So, wow, okay, that's, um, so um, Phil is saying spiritism is more aligned to traditional Christianity, is that correct? Yes, exactly, but it's not, it's not the, the, the uh, close-minded Christianity that we have nowadays. Is, is more aligned into the roots of Christianity, which, uh, the Jesus, what Jesus had taught us, which is love above everything, putting, like loving our neighbors, loving ourselves, loving our uh, God, right? Love is, was the, the core of the, the, thought, the teachings of Jesus. He came to break all those traditions, all those uh, the Jewish uh, uh, strict traditions that was like based on the law and judgment of each other and all that. And all of a sudden Christianity became those same things, right? Yes, yes, <laughs> the, yes. Judging and condemning each other and trying to like, uh, you know, you are going to heaven, you're not going to heaven. When Jesus said, uh, the, uh, follow me, uh, I am the truth, and uh, no no one goes to the, to God without me. Without me, is without His teachings, which is love, love, right? And uh, putting man above about above the law, about traditions, about stereotypes. Jesus was like the most uh, uh, active socialist of all the times. <laughs> he was. He was talking with women. At that time, women was not considered a person. They were considered objects and possession of men. They are not considered citizens. They, they, he talked with kids and he said, nobody goes to the, the heaven of God if you, if you are not like a child, which means pure spirit, right? Like without all those preconceived preconceptions, without all those bias, without all those prejudices that we have, Absolutely, which exactly. is man-made, which is religion, right? Exactly. Religion is main with rules and regulations, do that, don't do that. Yeah. And this is why there is like, I can sense from various communities, almost a split in the spiritualist community where, uh, like for instance, in the UK, we have the SNU where, you know, they, uh, they are like a religion, but, you know, they don't want to bring God in and they don't recognize really the angels. But then, you know, some of them do use it. And then, and then here we come, like the uh, indigo children that we are spearheading into the preconceived man-made, um, I'd like to see more spiritist philosophy discussed, discussed in our spiritualist churches, says Phil. I totally agree with that, actually. I really totally agree. And uh, for me, the main reason that I'm here and I'm doing uh, this uh, weekly program, this live chat show, is to bring the light of Christ consciousness back in, because to me, that is not religion, that is pure spirit, it's pure love, which is talking straight and directly, uh, trying to uh, expand our um, higher chakra, which is actually the Thanos chakra, which is the seat of our soul. And by, uh, can, so this is bringing us back to the work you do as well with your 
um, clients, um, you know, and uh, with music. So the expansion of the heart center of the compassion of the self-love, which is the one of the most important things, the things that it, it's been brought back to our attention, right? Absolutely. And, and uh, we need to develop that. And I absolutely feel that uh, at present, you know, what you're saying about the difference between spiritism and spiritualism is suddenly clicks and it all makes sense. Um, um, there, I don't know if you know about the Essenes, um, which was the group that was following Jesus. Okay, and I'm not talking about religion, but I'm just talking about the teachings because the Essenes were the group following Jesus followers that were applying these um, uh, spiritual teachings that you were talking about. So it all comes on back, you know, some of the followers and the, one of the main disciples was actually Mary Magdalene, who is the essence of compassion. Okay, together together with um, Holy Mary, that is. But Mary Magdalene had, and as you said, he was talking to women, right? And this is why the perception of the Roman Catholic Church saying, um, you know, Mary Magdalene was a bad woman because in those days, women were, you know, men were not allowed to talk to women. So she was the bad one. Okay, yeah. so it all kind of clicking all in yes. place now and it all makes sense you know why and uh, you know um as a medium and a channeler um you know i have con i have con uh, had messages through from anna uh, who yeah. is um was jesus grandmother and she yeah. was um also involved in that and uh, not a lot of people know that jesus actually wasn't that um rock star that people want to make through you know yeah. if i want to call it in a modern fashioned way you uh -huh. know he actually wasn't really very well known at all he was like you know in islamism he was yet again just another disciple you know he wasn't the figure that he has uh, taken on for the Roman Catholic, you know, yeah. Catholics. So I know that we kind of gone down a different way, but I, I, I just wanted to, um, you know, just bring us back to connection to, to spirit and um, how uh, coming from this massive, wonderful, uh, knowledge that you have, you know, from um, uh, clearly you have a lot of culture and a lot of knowledge and sound knowledge of what you do, which I absolutely adore because a lot of people talk a lot but without much knowledge behind. And even so, uh, you know, it's wonderful to have you on here because. Um, you know, we can have like um, a perspective, a lot of, you see a lot of spiritualists, uh, particularly from the SNU, they just, you know, like talk a lot about science behind, you know, spiritualism. And you actually brought in a lot of elements to that, which are really, I feel like very intriguing. What I wanted to ask you about is, um, you know, about your mediumship. And how, so given all of the knowledge you have, how do you see our connection to spirit evolve? Because at the moment, say for instance, here in the UK, um, the, um, in the UK, um, there is a lot of input and stress put, which is, I agree with that, which is very important, is to give evidence of the life beyond, okay, beyond the veil, okay. So uh, we are a soul carried uh, in a. It's a soul uh, dressed up with a body. Let's say that we are not a body with a soul, right? Yeah. So we are soul incarnate, okay, to actually um, 
have a 3D experience in the density of the energy. Okay, yeah. so um, my question is, how do you see the evolution of our soul through your experience and through channeling um, with your guides and your circle and your reading the literature from spiritualists and spiritism? What is your, your what, how can you bring to the table your thought? What are your thoughts about this? I think it's, it's a very important aspect of for us to think because, yes, evolution is our goal as a spirit. We are incarnated to grow, right? All the incarnations we go to either in this planet or other planets, we is the purpose is to grow because that's the how created the world. Uh, so that's one of the aspects of uh, the science not being conflicted with uh, with uh, the spiritualism, which is the, the evolution. So the same thing that we see in biology, mm. that the, the species evolved over time, we also follow the same rule because the laws of God do not change. They, it is not conflicting in, 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 a, in a secular world or in a, in a church, there's no separation. So the same law of evolution applies to every aspect of ourselves, including our spiritual aspect. Mm -hmm. And is, is, I see, honestly, uh, that all those things that are happening nowadays universally in our world is part of our evolution. The spreading of spiritualism is part of our evolution. Uh, uh, humanity being able to grasp that we are spirits, spirit, like you said, our essence is the spirit. And as such, we can communicate with the spiritual world is a natural thing. So mm -hmm. being a medium is not like a witch. It's not like a superpower. It's not everyone can be a medium, right? It's all about developing, developing our skills to connect with God and connect with spirits and with your guides. Mm -hmm. So it's a natural part of ourselves as humanity. Yeah. And, uh, and, and not by chance, uh, not by coincidence, we see all these commotions uh, around the world uh, with awareness coming up about uh, discrimination, racism, rights of uh, you know, L LGBTQ communities, women's rights, uh, you know, families and domestic violence and all this awareness and all those those changes that, that are being brought up, that has always been a problem in humanity and, and was like somehow under the rug and now is being brought to the surface to our awareness so we can solve it for once because this is part of our evolution. Just saying things and not meaning doesn't mean anything. Having laws and not following and not putting in practice doesn't mean anything. So evolution is part of that. It's part of being truthful. And, and because spirits never lie. Like you can lie as a person. You can say something and mean something else. But as, as a medium, we see that the communication is mind to mind, right? Yes, and, that's right. Yeah. But, and the minds don't lie, like you cannot lie, <laughs> right? And so that's what, what we are having as humanity to yeah. really be truthful and be yeah. and get rid of all those, those uh, fake, you know, uh, progress that we have made in the past, which was valid, was valid to have laws and all those things, but let's be real, right? Let's really respect each other and love each other and, you know, uh, validate our differences and our diversity in all the aspects of ourselves because that's how we are. And the di diversity, men and women, straight and gay and, and, bi and you know, transgender or whatever, different cultures, different, different classes and all that, all this diversity is what makes us rich. Right. This so absolutely true. Powerful. Absolutely true. And, um, you know, the whole universe is made of differences and they do integrate. But yeah. again, it's a bit like religion, isn't it? Yes, yes. It's all you know, it's all mind made, all those discrimination is like man made, right? 
Absolutely. Uh, it's like about control. It's about, you know, uh, I'm better than you. So it could be yeah. anything else. It's not like a, a gender only thing. It's like so many things that are being, uh, you know, say, for instance, uh, European countries such as Italy, for instance, I, I was listening the other day to some uh, documentary and apparently women, they are still not given the opportunity to work nowhere near 50% as much as the men, which is disgraceful, you know, yeah. because yeah. women are meant to stay at home, grow, you know, bring up the children. And so, and then if they are off because the children are sick or they're pregnant, they also, they better stay home. I'm going to hire a man instead, mm -hmm. you know, and, yeah. uh, and this is, you know, not nice at all. And then, yeah. as you say, it's diversity, it's across the board, right? So how do you think, um, have you been perceiving a different type of vibration from spirits coming through with messages? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, okay, my, my, that? my connections with, with guys have changed uh, over time. I have seen uh, other colleagues and, and medium friends also uh, receiving messages from uh, different kinds of guides and, and more women. I um, also have, have, have been having a lot of uh, very uh, close conversations and connections with Holy Mary. And uh, I have never been brought up to have connection with her because I, like I said, I grew up in a Baptist church and they don't believe in, in anything but Jesus. Like they, they think that this is, uh, you know, saints, uh, idolatry. And so they have a different perspective. Yes. yes. And so more women inspire enlightened women coming through and it's so beautiful and um, and bringing the power and the knowledge and the healing, the healing that we need as humanity. That's so fantastic. And That's fantastic. Thank you. Yes. This is what I've been saying all along. So having your confirmation as well, it's it's amazing. It's amazing. Absolutely. Because it's more to do with the feminine side of the compassion, of the self-love, of the acceptance of the others. It's not yes. about only accepting ourselves as we are unconditionally. Yes. So yes. it's not just the society uh, yes. perceiving and tagging the diversity, um, like the gay population and the women that cannot work and so on and so forth. It's to do with first, mostly accepting ourselves the way absolutely we and, and what we are perceived from the society yes the moment where we start accepting ourselves that's when we can become strong and just have this evolution happen right yes absolutely unconditional love is universal love is the, the only type of love that god has for us and the only way, only place we see that's inert is the love from mothers to, to, kids, to their kids. It's the unconditional love. A normal mother, for sure, right? Like we have mothers and mothers, but... <laughs> yeah, no, <laughs> like, absolutely. <laughs> but a, a normal mother who is able to give unconditional love for their kids, which is the closest what that we have from the love of God. So we need women in power. And it's not like a feminist kind of speech or a rhetoric. It's like that the diversity that we need that that women can bring is healing and is necessary for humanity, as as well as every everything else. All the different cultures, different uh, you know races, and uh, different even different religions. Because that's the other thing about spiritualism. Spiritualism is not an exclusive religion. Like when you need we need to convert and abandon your religion. No, it's about a lifestyle. You can be, you can continue to become Jewish. You can continue to become Muslim. You can continue to become a Buddhist or, or Christian, whatever you, you feel like, and be a spiritualist uh, because we respect everyone uh, and we include everyone uh, because diversity is the key. 
a spirituality is an individual and subjective experience and there's no no set of po politics or rules religious rules that's going to ever determine uh, something that everybody can fit in yeah exactly and phil was mentioning religion a convenient tool for the hierarchy 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 uh, hierarchy uh, of the church, I made it, uh, to yeah. control the people, um, which is why most of them and are anti-spiritualism, spiritism radically goes against the grain. Yeah, absolutely. And and why why we we are so like rejected uh, now is becoming less and less, but uh, because we bring power for the people. Yes. And, you know, when we talk about bringing forward the light and, uh, you know, when you hear on the chats, on the media of people talking about the light uh, and the fight against the darkness. I mean, this is what we're talking essentially about, about like a bunch of us, not many, but still powerful because we carry the light and yeah. we don't mind shining it. OK, yeah. we are not afraid of it because we have faith. And because we know from the spirit world what really needs to be happening against the people that are still sticking in that conventional uh, pragmatism, you know, mm -hmm. of um, having to set things into the four walls. So, mm -hmm. uh, um, I mean, uh, Nietzsche comes to mind when he was being, sort of being crazy when he was, you know, talking about you know, religion from a different perspective because it was not conforming, okay, yeah. into the society. So mm -hmm. we're talking about the 1800 perhaps there, but mm -hmm. if you think about it, perhaps we haven't come that long way. I mean, we yes. have- In that regard, yes. Mm -hmm. but yeah, but we have evolved, but, mm -hmm. you know, in a certain way because th there is so much still to be done and we are just at the beginning of the Aquarian age, right? Because yeah. we are just starting warming up the engines and, you know, there are people out there, I know, um, you know, that have, uh, are trying to create, um, you know, their own um, little circles. Like I, I know that Neil, for instance, uh, he runs his own circle and um, he's a spiritualist and we figured out that actually we're talking the same language when it comes to a new type of mediumship, where it's to do with spirit coming and teaching again to us. You know, we had the like, uh, the like of um, Edward Case, for instance, being a fantastic medium all rounder, right? And, and yet, he, you know, he had to, he didn't care if I, I was reading his book and he really didn't care, you know, about what others were thinking. He just carried on plowed through just by giving the most amazing evidence, mm -hmm. right? And, mm -hmm. and yet people were like, do I believe in that or not? And uh, the truth is, it's not us. It's not me against you. It's like my spirit devolving, you know, um, information. Mm -hmm. Okay, and so um, uh, so Phil is also adding also why Young was unpopular in certain circles. Are Young? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yes, everything that questions the status quo is unwelcome until people evolve and becomes um, baseline. So it happens with art, it happens with science. Like the first scientists that said that the earth was round, it was a globe, they were killed, <laughs> <laughs> right? Because I mean, there's nothing to laugh about, by the way. <laughs> yeah, but but it's, it's funny for us to think about this now, right? But that's what's happening today with certain other things, right? Absolutely. And people are questioning this whole reality of communicating with the spiritual world, with uh, soul's evolution, spiritual evolution, with the necessity of us to evolve our moral standards, because that's part of our evolution. Yes. And embracing differences and all that. So 
uh, people are being persecuted and laughed at, uh, uh, of uh, because of the lack of understanding. Uh, but it, again, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if we are being true to God and to uh, uh, the, the guides that he gave to us to inspire us, to, to, to lead us and to share their truth is what matters. And, you know, we need to just keep going. No, absolutely. Now, um, thank you, Phil. He's a really, truly enjoying excellent discussion. Thank you for that and for your support, for being here. Um, and Sandra, I am totally, truly blown away by this conversation, uh, just to cite what Phil is saying. And I would love to have you uh, around again, maybe sometime in the autumn, if you're up for it, because, um, okay. you know, there is, yeah, I, I think we've only touched, you know, the yes. top, the, you know, the tip of the, <laughs> of the iceberg, of the iceberg yeah. right? Um, if you were, and I know, you know, we haven't, I haven't really told you, you know, what my intention was, but also, you know, I'm guided by spirit, but, if we were to take a moment and take a breather, what do you think after the discussion we've had tonight, because I'm aware that you need to go in 10 minutes, because at your end, it's still work time, it's daytime, yeah. it's lunchtime. So thank you so much for taking an well. hour of your lunchtime to give to us and have this beautiful discussion. What do you think if, if spirit and your guides were able to talk, what do you think the message would be to us today? You don't uh, have yeah. to channel, you, you don't need, necessarily need to channel, but anything that has been coming true of interest that we should know. Yes, what I, what I have been receiving constantly is the need of uh, for us to connect with God, for, for us to understand our necessity to respect each other, to accept each other, uh, to evolve morally, to, to mean what we say, uh, to really embrace the changes that our society needs uh, worldwide in terms of human rights, in terms of respecting each other, because that is basically, that's basically what we need to heal all the problems we have in the world. If we think about hunger, war, uh, violence, uh, you know, uh, problems with uh, gangs or drugs and all those problems we have is a consequence of selfishness. If people think about themselves in relation to each other as a continuous, because we are a continuation of each other, we are part of a big indivisible wholeness, which is called the universe. And if we understand that and live according to that, all those problems disappear because we are not going to be stealing from each other we are not going to deprive our neighbors from the rights of food and shelter and happiness and everything. We are going to be taking care of each other. We are going to not impose violence against each other. We are not going to take advantage of each other. Uh, you know, all those problems we have with power and, and violence and everything, discrimination and racism is a consequence of selfishness. It's like, I am better than you. I want more advantages than you. Therefore, I want all those rules, all those uh, uh, the philosophy uh, because it's advantageous to me. This is selfishness. So that's what we need to break from because what we, what we are doing is, and that's what science is so beautiful to teach us. People, does people know what, what cancer is? Cancer is exactly that. One single cell all of a sudden decides to fight the other cells around them and work against the other cells. That is the core of cancer. And that's what we do as humanity when we are living in a selfish way. 
what, if that cell, if those cells that we have in our bodies, when those cells work accordingly to their roles, understanding that they are part of the same body and they, they need to work harmoniously with each other, otherwise they are all gonna die, everything goes well. We have health. We are only going to have health in our planet, in our society, in our lives, happiness when we live with this truth, which, which is the truth of the universe. It's not my truth, it's not my belief, it's the truth of the universe, that we are all interconnected in, in an indivisible wholeness. So when we understand that and live in harmony with each other, respecting each other, and understanding that if I hurt my neighbor, I'm hurting myself, that's how we are going to evolve as humanity. Well, thank you. That, that is absolutely amazing. And the truth of the message is that we are one consciousness. Yes. And, you know, um, I get uh, Jennifer joining us. Hi, Jennifer. Good evening. Um, many discussions like today that I have heard lately, the group I was part of 30 years ago were saying what is being said now. It feels very strange to hear this again at this time. Wonderful. I feel that uh, perhaps um, just a very small minority has known the truth because clearly connecting to spirit. But now I feel that the energies that are developing on our, in our planet are actually preparing the ground for the truth to emerge. Mm -hmm. And the consciousness and Perhaps, uh, may I dare I say, because of internet and the fact that we can all talk to each other in a much more immediate way, we are figuring out that it's not just me, it's you, it's Jennifer, it's Phil, it's Neil, it's everybody else that we are coming together now and saying, hold on a second, hey Debbie, welcome. You know, it's, you know, hold on a second, actually, we do have the power, we do have the voice, and what's going on? It's not on. Mm -hmm. All of this egoism, yeah. all of this me, 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 I'm better, I'm richer, I'm this, I'm that, yeah. you know? Um, that it's something that we want to fight and put light on it and shine because this is what we are doing, putting a light on the darkness, putting the light on the situations um, um, in life, like politics, for instance, corruption, uh, you know, fight, war, fights, famine, um, you know, abuse, uh, you know, women uh, being empowered to come forward and say enough is enough. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, with the, the, the so many other minorities of any sort and type. So what I wanted to say is uh, what a privilege and an honor to have had you, Sandra. I mean, I'm absolutely blown away. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for privilege being here with my... us. To have been here with us tonight has been an absolute. And sometimes I tell myself, you know, I'm going to ask my guests to give some messages here and there. But I feel that when we have conversations like this, okay, readings are available on other channels as well. And we are all practicing mediums. But I feel that we need to bring forward, you know, the, the knowledge, the understanding, okay and uh, the awareness above all that um, things don't need to be done in the old way there are new paradigms that are being brought forward mm -hmm. and uh, we are at the forefront of this movement and i wanted to say thank you so much you're doing an, a most amazing job thank you so uh, much and service not only for having been here tonight 
but for everything else that you do for many people out there that clearly do need your help. And um, we are having Neil saying, and I'll oh, thank you, Daniela Florio, for bringing this together and out for everyone to see and hear and come together to grow and be enriched. Absolutely, and very well said. Thank you ever, ever so much. Have a Thank wonderful you. rest of your day, Sandra. And uh, we so will. Danielle, it was a great pleasure to be here with you. And you, you have a wonderful mission uh, bringing these discussions and do and in everything you do as well. We are together, dear, and we are together with all the audience that are connected. Uh, today and whoever else is out there in the world doing the, 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 the work of God, spreading the consciousness and spreading our awareness in the world. Thank Absolutely. you so much. Thank you so much. And thank you for everyone again for joining us this week. And uh, um, next week, um, we have a, a new guest um, who will be Fiona Dot with uh, Healing Through Music. And um, she's also uh, someone that has worked on trauma. So we will be talking about that as well. Again, Sandra, thank you very much and everybody else for joining us. Take care. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.